Well, hello everybody. Welcome back to Ordinary Adventures. We're still on the Disney Wish. Today is our last day on board the Disney Wish. We're going to start things off with Coffee and Cove Cafe, and we're going to get a special preview of Disney's Uncharted Adventure, a new interactive game that unlocks a hidden layer of Disney magic around the cruise ship. And of course, you're not on a Disney cruise if you don't run into some of your favorite characters. And tonight, we'll get a preview of the new Little Mermaid show and take a look at some of the exclusive merchandise. And we'll eat in 1923, a restaurant inspired by the old Hollywood of Walt Disney's past. And we'll end our journey aboard the Wish with a magical kiss goodnight. How about you come with us on this adventure? start the morning going to Cove Cafe because I need a coffee. So we have to go to the back of the ship for that and I just realized on the rug there's a telltale sign. These stars, the stars point towards the front and the two legs, two legs of the stars point to the back. So we're going that way. So Ordinary Adventure pro tip, if you don't know where you are on the ship, look at the rug and follow the stars. So we learned another pro tip about navigating Disney ships. The character in the atrium, or in this case, the Grand Hall. Why her face? I don't know, there's something with the eyes. The <laughs> there's teeth. something weird with the eyes. It's the combination of the eyes and the teeth. Yeah. Well, we were just talking to a cast member because we still don't know where we're going. And we want to go to the back of the ship and he's like a good way to figure that out, not only by looking at the stars and where they point you, but if you look at the characters around the ship, whichever way they're facing, they're always facing the front. So she's kind of like being like... Yeah, so pro tip, she's butt like, check gets you the aft. There we go, yes, exactly. And this gets you the front. <laughs> oh. It's a bit smaller. Yeah. I think it's supposed to be Moana themed in here. Yeah. So I see a little bit of subtle details. I it's like, like the details. Up, it's like an upscale Moana. At a lot of the lounges and cafes here, they have the menu on an iPad. So that's kind of unique. I like that because it makes it interactive. The question is, do I want a hot beverage, a cold beverage, or a cocktail? <laughs> you want a cold beverage. I feel like I want to get a hot one just because they put the designs on top. You know what I mean? Oh, uh, yeah. This seems like there's like a ton of variety of stuff to get here. Oh, so cute. Oh, yeah. thank you very much. Yeah. Right? Yeah. so basic. I ended up just getting a vanilla latte, but I really wanted the thing on top, so I got the Disney Wish logo, and it was totally worth the $6. <laughs> I'm not even a latte girl. I just had to. It is really good though. If you want like good coffee and a nice quiet atmosphere, come to the Coke Cafe. Yeah, we love the Coke Cafe. Yeah, we do. And they give you a card or once you order five drinks, you get the sixth one for free. So that, that's a nice little, you know, incentive. And today we're docked at Castaway Key. We're, not, we're probably not getting off the ship because there's so much to explore, but boy, do I want to. Oh, look at this lounger. Even has a place for you to put a drink or do some work. Who's kidding? Put a drink. <laughs> so we're on our way to check out the funnel suite and we can't find it, but we happened to find Donald who was just chilling all by himself and he was like, come up, hang out with me. We got to spend like 10 minutes with him, just like take the photos. And he was like telling us about all his favorite spots on the island and it was great. Yeah, and I was like, why aren't you on the island? He was like, oh, I could just swim down. Yeah. Just dive down. Yeah. And then I asked him where the funnel suite was. He, he was, was like, I don't know. <laughs> they don't like, allow me luck. up there. He's like, good luck. How did you guys get access? <laughs> find it? Yes, I found it. It's, it's hidden. a secret elevator. Wow. How do we open it? I think normally like you would use your, your card. Yeah. But we're doing a special tour. So we're allowed to be in here this one time, this one time only. So I don't think we're ever gonna be able to book this suite otherwise. Yeah. So this is gonna be exciting to see. This is like living a bougie life to the extreme. Yeah, I think it might be like thirty-five to forty thousand dollars. Fourteen? Fourteen. Look at this elevator. Even this elevator looks like it's like made out of gold. 
apparently we misread the schedule and the suite is closed. We didn't get to see it ourselves, but luckily Disney has provided us with some B-roll footage so you can get a glimpse at it. This is 1,966 square feet penthouse, and it comfortably sleeps up to eight guests with two main bedrooms, a children's room, and a library that converts into a bedroom, and four and a half bathrooms. And it's themed artfully after Moana, which is my favorite part. For those of you wondering, the second funnel is more of a design choice on Disney's part. In other ships, they've had the kids club in the funnel suite. But here, they have an amazing suite for one lucky family. And the details are insane. Like the handcrafted porcelain sculpture at the entryway, when guests arrive home, will start pulsing with hues of green and eventually you'll hear the music of Moana and a special lighting and audio effect that eventually fills the room to provide a magical one-of-a-kind greeting. So we decided to get off the castaway to get a couple photos of the outside of the ship, but don't worry, we'll be back there soon enough. Please, please subscribe below if you want to see that. But it was cool to see Donald actually got off the ship after all. He didn't have to dive off the side like he said he was going to do. And now we're about to go try a demo of this new interactive game that they have aboard the Disney Wish called Disney Uncharted Adventure. So Disney Uncharted Magic is the next evolution of the Muppet detective agency that's been on the previous Disney ship and the Menahune Adventure Trail that was at Alani. And what the idea here is there's a secret layer of hidden magic around the ship and you use magical, a magical spyglass to unlock it. And of course, that's your iPhone and the Navigator app and first you create your own avatar which is kind of fun yeah that was there was a huge selection you could go as wild as you want to or just keep it simple of course we decided to be green aliens from star wars wearing our chewbacca outfit and our r2d2 hat because we're ordinary adventures and uh yeah but they they have, have they have it updated they have miss marvel's costume in there and you can unlock other costumes by completing adventures sailors for many years have been using the constellations to guide their way but the wish uses the wishing star to guide its way but as you learn at the beginning of this journey the wishing star has been broken apart into pieces by some unknown force and we have been tasked by Captain Minnie to go put the pieces, to get, find the pieces, bring them back together. That's a big task. I'm glad she trusts us. Yes. I think we could do it. So there's four <laughs> different quests at, at start and that's going to be Princess and the Frog, Finding Nemo, Peter Pan and Moana. We tested two of those. First we tested Peter Pan and it led us to the screen on deck four where we unlocked a game where we had to collect stars. Yeah, that was actually, it felt like a video game. It was on the, a gigantic screen, and you each had your character, and you're working as a group. So everyone that you're playing with, you're all working together. And you're using your phone to like, as a gyro controller, to yeah. control your character on the screen. Yeah, so that was pretty fun. The other thing is, you're playing as a team, but there's also individual scores, so you have bragging rights of exactly. how good you did. I didn't win that one, unfortunately. <laughs> We ended up losing Tinkerbell and had to go to Hook's Barbary, which is thematic because Captain <laughs> Hook. And we found Tinkerbell in the lanterns inside. We had to do, what did you have to do to unlock her? Uh, I think there was like certain keys and you had to match the key with the lantern. There was a, a young child in our group who like got it before everyone, <laughs> like she was like so quick. <laughs> yeah, and this is cool because it's not just screens. I was worried at the start of this that it was gonna be just like you go around to another screen and do a thing. I like that it's like practical, kind of like the Menahune Adventure Trail. Yeah, it's a mixture of both and you never know what it's gonna be until you show up. So in Princess and the Frog, Lewis told us that we needed a bright light to attract the fireflies to light our way to the piece of the star. And he sent us to that new candy place, Joyful Sweets. And we had to, it was basically like a matching game, like a memory game and we had to match the certain lights and then they, they like lit up and stuff. And it was really fun because we were the ones controlling it. So everyone else who was in there was like looking at us like, oh my God, how did that happen? Yeah, and it was actually not that easy because you had to remember the different colors that were fading yeah, on I'm there. I'm not good at that. Put them in order. <laughs> and then we got brought to a series of paintings from Princess and the Frog, which I was like, oh my God, are these screens? And I, I we've been walking by them this whole time. No, they aren't screens, but you use your your spyglass to unlock the magic, which unlocks the fireflies that are in the painting. Yeah, so it turns into like an augmented reality and you have to catch all these fireflies in a jar and you're going around and up and down and over and <laughs> I was like running into people trying to do it. It was really fun. Here they come. Oh. Oh. How do you 
flying out from the paintings. Looks like someone might be going behind you, so you have to turn around and see if you can grab them that way. Oh, you're all right. Over you. Don't worry, they're friendly. Uh, they're they're attacking you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, here, get them off. Get them off. That's so like, fun. Or you get. Right, like here we're actually using real physical art. You know, this is just a, a normal piece of artwork. But we have the secret fireflies that are actually living inside of it. So we're That's using so augmented reality to bring that particular activity to life. So when you think of every piece of art you've seen on the ship, combined with every digital sign you've seen on the ship, combined with some of the magical objects scattered throughout, you kind of get a sense for how many different places Disney Uncharted Adventure actually has to sort of choose from when it's picking where your quest should send you. So even if you play the whole thing twice, you might find those fireflies are not down here, now they're on deck 11, and now you're gonna go somewhere totally different to find them. So a lot of opportunity for replayability there. And another cool thing about this experience is that it's smart. So it knows that there's a lot of people on this cruise ship and it's not gonna send two people to one place at one time. So it will navigate you to a different part for, a, like if there's someone already there for the same story moment. So there's tons of possibilities here. They could expand on this. I think this is kind of cool. Yeah, and then I think the most interesting part of it is it all ends as like a communal gathering. You all meet in the Luna Lounge like at whatever specific time. After everyone's been getting all those pieces of the wishing star, on the last night of the voyage, everyone's gonna get a message from Captain Minnie within their spy class. And she's gonna say, thanks for all the great work finding all the pieces of the star's magic. It's time to restore the magic of the wishing star. So bring your spy glasses, bring those pieces, and meet me tonight at Luna at 7 p.m. or whenever you know, she decides to tell you to go there. Uh, and when we all arrive there, we're all gonna bring our spy glasses. We're gonna, you know, through the power of wishing energy, watch as those, those pieces leave our phones and show up on that big 15-foot video wall. And as the wishing star sort of spins back to life, but before we can get it back up in the sky, there's an infamous Disney villain who may have been the one who sort of shattered it in the first place, who's been watching us all along and crashes the party. And so she's in the attempt to steal the power of the wishing star. We now have to work together, not just with our family, but with everyone else in that space, you know, all 200 of us, let's say, to defeat this villain once and for all and get that star back where it belongs. So That's it's a, cool. Like 20 minute kind of live show meets uh, you know, video game experience. We've got special effects. We've got a, a live crew member who's sort of the MC and who's interacting with the characters. So it's going to really bring together a lot of different types of storytelling uh, into one big finale uh, that will quite literally end with the end with a bang and, and make it so that you know we really hope everyone will be very excited to finally get that star back in the sky. Um, and it takes this experience from something that was you know just you and your group having your own adventure to now something that's a communal experience we're all having together. You know, the same way the the deck parties and the fireworks bring us all together as one sort of sailing. This is another opportunity for that too. So that's gonna be called the Battle for the Wishing Star and that's gonna happen on the last night of each voyage. I think this is really cool. I think this is a great update on the Muppet Detective Agency concept. I just wish we weren't having to use our phones so much on the cruise ship. Yeah. That aside, it's done in a really cool way. We're using it as controllers, you're using augmented reality, and I like the practical nature. So if, if they I don't know. I can't wait to play this. Hopefully this will be available on our cruise when we go it's coming in a few weeks. Soon. It's coming soon. So fingers crossed. Yeah, because we are coming back in a few weeks and hopefully it will be ready by then. Because I want to play all the things. I want to do all the things. <laughs> oh, one last thing. I forgot about this. It responds to things you do. So if you have a port adventure where you go snorkeling, it will unlock snorkeling gear to put on your character. Oh, I love that. So, and, and there's going to be some kind of Disney Play app connectivity, so you'll unlock achievements into that. I don't know. I just think it's really cool. This is the Enchanted Sword Cafe. So they have like coffees and coffee cocktails. There's like so many like little lounges. They're everywhere, man. Everywhere we turn, there's something new. Yeah, and around this corner. Pluto! We found Pluto! That's a very nice name. Yeah, do you think those names? Both. Both? What a great name. Do you think that is so sweet? Thank you so much. Pluto sends all of the love and all of the kisses. There we go. Would you like to get a photo with Pluto? That sounds awesome. Okay, we're going to spin around. <laughs> He's super happy about it. Man, I love the Disney magic. This little girl is just meeting Pluto, and they're asking her about her dog, and she's like, He's super sweet, just like you, to Pluto. It was just so like heartwarming. I love it. So we're on deck four, and this rug is inspired by Peter Pan. What is this one? Um, oh, Sleeping Beauty. Right? No, it's not. We're on deck five. I think that's uh What is the rabbit? Um, Let us know in the comments below. 
So we're about to just sit down and take a break, but then I was looking at the app and I saw that Chippendale meet at 5.15. Booking it there. Let's go, we got one minute. You know Kitra's excited about something when she's willing to walk down the stairs on her recovering ankle. But here's one of the things I don't like about the shift is there's no elevator in the main hall, in the atrium. They only have an elevator in the forward and the back. So and now, now we want to get down to deck three and it's closed off. Yeah, so now we have to walk all the way to the elevator and then walk all the way back. And as somebody who's disabled, that's just not good. Yeah. That's not great, I don't like it. But I'm willing to do that for my boys, let's go. <laughs> so there used to be an elevator here and an elevator here and an elevator here. And they turned into just two elevators which makes it a little bit more complicated. There they are, it was worth it. Hi there! Hello! Hi! Hi. Hi. When I tell you that I ran here to come see you, I'm not joking. I booked it all the way here. You guys are my favorite. I'm so excited I got to see you finally. That was me. I wasn't quite that fast, but... Yeah. <laughs> so nice to finally see you. I love well, your outfits. I love their sailor, their sailor suits. <sighs> Worth it. <laughs> Worth it. <laughs> I love how no one's there and they're just still having a grand old time up to their mischief. <laughs> what is going on? Oh, is he steering the ship? <laughs> oh, he's steering the ship. Are you the new captain? Uh-huh. No. <laughs> While we were sitting in Nightingales, they came over the loudspeaker and said that they're doing a test dress rehearsal of the new Little Mermaid show. Yeah, it, wasn't, it was going to be canceled. Yeah, it was supposed to be canceled. So we were going to order a drink, but now we're running to the show. And Where are the fireflies? Hand over the <laughs> they're all in my, my jar. Oh, they're there. I see them. And as always, we can't record the show, but I can show you what it looks like before the show. Welcome back to Peter and Kitra Review musicals on cruise ships that you don't get to watch because we're not allowed to film but let us tell a breakdown and tell you our review peter yes it's interesting well first of all the cast is amazing singers amazing puppeteers amazing actors amazing mm -hmm. it's interesting because they frame this telling of the little mermaid as this group of people on the beach find some artifacts and then they decide to retell the story of little mermaid i'm not sure that it needed that Per se, like that, like beginning scene. I liked it though. But aside from that, I really enjoyed it. Yeah, I had a great time with that. Like he said, the voices, the talent that Disney has, you feel like it, it's a legit Broadway musical. And the technology that they have in this new theater, there's like lighting effects, like. Oh my god, was, like they yeah. do projection mapping all over the theater in a way I've never seen before. Like at one point, we were, I looked up and we were under the sea. Yeah. I looked up and you could see and the just, water yeah, above I you. I didn't notice me like tapping on the shoulder and was like, look, and I was like, oh my God, this is awesome. So I would say if you're coming on this cruise, make sure you see this. It's a brand new show. Supposedly it was the first time they performed it tonight. We saw a dress rehearsal, which is kind of cool. Yeah, so we were like the first people to see it. Yeah. It feels very special. We have 30 minutes before our dinner, so we're going to check out Mickey's main sales. That's where they have most of the Disney Cruise Line merch. And we're going to do a quick... Uh, walk of that. We'll have a video later on showing you all the merch, but we only have time right now to quickly browse. This store is a little bit more narrow than previous ships. It like oh. is not like this huge store. Yeah, but I'm sure there's gonna be some good stuff in here. Found a new mug. It says Disney Wish, and it kind of looks like it has like the blueprint of the ship. This looks like something that Royal Caribbean would do. 
Yeah. Like, doesn't it? They always, like, Royal Caribbean always... But if it was Royal Caribbean, it'd be like, 4,000 passengers. Biggest, longest, big, heaviest. Bigger than the Statue of Liberty. <laughs> and they have inaugural sailing collection. The stuff's going to be available, I think, for the first year or so. What is this? Like a greeting card? Yeah, I guess it's a greeting card. Yeah, you could send it to somebody and be like, wish you were here. <laughs> they, got, they got a journal as well. Nice. Everything here is like very gold and like classy. What about this Disney Cruise Line? Bottle, bottle opener, opener magnet? Yeah. I mean, look nice on our fridge, just saying. If you didn't want that blueprint on a coffee mug, they have it printed on a piece of glass. And, oh, it's slightly different on a t-shirt. Actually, I might get that t-shirt. Is that too boring of a t-shirt? Yes. Yes? But it does have the Disney Cruise Line. Gives it like a more premium feel. I spoke too soon. They do have that print on the t-shirt. I think this is this is the one you're probably gonna get. Huh? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> wow, the store keeps on going and going. At first, I thought it was really small, but it's just long. It's narrow. Yeah. That's how they get you. That's how they get you to spend the big buccaronis. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, there's a lot of people in line. There is. The yeah. lines are crazy. People are going crazy for this merch. So this is that other towel that we showed you before. They have the same design on a magnet. Yeah. That's pretty cute. Yeah, you only like it as, because that's ship and dip. Yeah, it does. It's like they're selling a huge scale model of the ship. And then they have the statue of Cinderella that's in the Grand Hall. And this scale model is a little bit smaller. A little bit more manageable. Oh my god, they have that same design but on a spirit jersey. Peter? But it's white. But... Donald's eating his apple. That's cute. That's cute. But you're right, it is white. It's a shame. That's a shame. I love that Captain Minnie is like front and center on some of this. They really are going with the gold. I just found this hoodie. And I'm not sure if it's great or bad. I like it because it almost looks like a towel, like a one of the towels that you get outside. Yeah, it does have like that texture to it. I mean... And it does have Chippendale. Look at Goofy. Look at the inside of the hoodie. It's a, definitely a statement piece. Yeah. I'll tell you that. Oh my god, these are great. So on the back of every Disney cruise ship, they have somebody like painting on whatever the ship is called. So this one is called The Wish and Rapunzel is painting it. So what does it show on the back? Oh, there's Pascal. Nothing. Nothing. Why doesn't it say? It should say it should like have the little animation there. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> There's so much new merchandise here. We're gonna have to come back and do a full tour, showing you everything that's sold here because there's a lot. Kitra, I found it. I'm gonna get this hoodie. Ooh. It says inaugural sailings, and then on the back. Now that's Wish. cool. I like that one the best so far. It has a little patch on the pocket. They even have merch for the world of Marvel. I did end up finding a spirit jersey that I liked. I like it because it's so plain. It's like this burgundy color with gold. See it on the back? Which? What do we think? I like it. Good, because I already bought it. <laughs> <laughs> it's pirate night tonight, but they are not celebrating that in the dining room. We're eating dinner in 1923, which is one of the new restaurants here on the Disney Wish. And that is named after the year that the Walt Disney Company was first founded. The unique thing about this restaurant is it's actually split into two sides. One is the Walt Disney side and one is the Roy Disney, who is Walt Disney's brother. So it's still one restaurant, but they split it into two. So it feels a little bit more intimate, I'm assuming. Window seat? Oh, yeah. This is the first time I think we've ever gotten a window seat at the main dining on a cruise ship before. So, the perks of only being two people on a cruise, you might get a good seat. I'm like so entertained by this. I love it. This entire venue reminds me of like so many places in Hollywood. It reminds me of like old Hollywood, including this like menu. Yeah. Yeah. But. Do you think, does the food remind you of California food? Yeah, it's not quite... I'm born and raised in California, so this isn't what I think of as California cuisine. But yeah, there, there's a lot of good-looking stuff on the menu. Let's take a look. We got 
pasta, salmon. I don't know. There's uh, filet mignon. Yeah, maybe the filet mignon. I mean, the, a lot of the names are kind of like California names. Yeah, Los Feliz Lobster Salad. Yeah. Oh, look, I found a hidden Mickey right there. I feel like no one sees that one. I, we could hear her eyes rolling yeah, back in her hand. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not quite sure that the, the whole Californian thing but I will say they nailed the theme of like the glitz and the glamour of like the golden age of movies and there's so much concept art on the walls all throughout the restaurant. I was talking to our server and he said there was like over like 900 pieces of concept art which is just insane. It's everywhere you look. It's like a mixture of that and then like a ritzy, I don't know. I don't, it, it's just, I wasn't expecting this. Yeah. I, I'm very impressed. And it's weird, the Roy Disney and the Walt Disney rooms, they're like completely separate. They actually separated those even smaller rooms into smaller spaces and it's surrounded by these concept Yeah, art. it feels like we're in like a little tiny restaurant. Yeah, I like it. I like it a lot more than the normal cruise dining. It feels more of like a, like a premium dining on a cruise experience. Yeah. It's all really cool. It's strange though because most of it's like Frozen and Moana, which doesn't make me think of like Walt Disney history. I know, yeah. There is some like Sleeping Beauty and Pinocchio and it's stuff. It's modern mixed with, you know, the, the classic golden age. For my appetizer, I got the Hyperion Four Cheese tricolor tortellini this is Meyer lemon artichoke sun-dried tomato and baby spinach and you know it's from California because it has the Hyperion <laughs> okay. which is the street where Walt Disney Company had their first studio yeah I think so it looks pretty though that looks like a work of art and I'm not sure there's that much multicolor there's orange and there's green oh there's another orange over there The bomb.com. It's very refreshing. Like, I didn't expect, you know, I saw tortellini and I ordered it because of tortellini. I didn't read the list of ingredients. <laughs> that lemon is really strong. So you're really getting like those citrus flavors. It's good though. I like it. I'd give it like a three and a half out of five people. And I saw cheese on the menu and I had to order it. I got the burrata, mozzarella cheese, and prosciutto. This has a crisp cranberry and sunflower seed phyllo and charred blood orange. You know it's from California because... Cheese? I don't know. Cheese? No, I don't, I'm not even sure it's I mean, out. where I grew up, it was like known for cows. So, don't cows make cheese? Yeah. So, there we go. Gotta get a big chunk of cheese, a little bit of the meat. I can't go wrong with cheese, am I right? <laughs> this tastes like burrata cheese with prosciutto, but then you add the sweet blood orange, and it, it takes it to like another level. Cause you already got the good, the good good, and then you add some more good, and it makes it extra good. This probably gets like a four out of five. It would get a five if they give me more cheese on the plate. For my second course, I got the split Napa baby romaine lettuce, and this has Caesar dressing, grape tomatoes, Parmesan cheese, and ciabatta garlic croutons. And you know it's from California because it has the word Napa in it, right? Yeah. Basically, I, it just looks like a Caesar salad, but it's almost like a wedge, like on a wedge of romaine lettuce. <laughs> I'm not mad at it, but does it taste good? One thing that I don't like about wedge salads is they make you do extra work by having to cut it yourself. Basic. Just tastes like a basic Caesar salad. Yeah. Which is pretty good. I like Caesar salad. Four out of five. Wait, four out of five for a basic Caesar salad? Three out of five. It's fine. Your rating system is... I don't, I don't trust you. The people trust me. That's all that matters. And I thought, sure, I'll also order a salad. Don't usually order the greens, but... <laughs> why not? Why not? So I got the fennel Bartlett pear salad. It says manchego cheese, walnut, cherry dressing. I've never had fennel before, so I'm not sure if I like fennel. <laughs> I, I think I saw pear, and I was like, oh, pear salad. Yeah. And then I tried to order the pear salad, and the server was like, what, what pear salad? Yeah, he's like, fennel? It's weird, because the fennel kind of tastes like licorice. And the pear gives it like a little bit of sweetness to it. Mm -hmm. And the cheese. 
it's like cheese, so like it's good. A sharpness or whatever. I don't know. And then you, you got the walnuts that gives a little crunchiness. It all kind of like goes together in a weird way, you know, like a weird puzzle. Not sure I should be doing this for a salad. I'll give it a four out of five Peters. Wow. Yeah, it's actually very good. So this one's a four. This one was a four, but then I changed it to three. <laughs> I think I'm going to change it to two and a half. Needs more cheese. Two and a half goes more with your review. Needs more cheese. Two and a half goes more with your review of it. <laughs> okay. For my entree, I ordered the seared salmon filet. This comes with a Californian wild honey, parsnip puree, orange fennel essence, and sauteed black garlic rapini. Oh, so that's why it's Californian. Because, why? Oh, California honey? Yeah. You're right. You're absolutely correct. When you're right, you're right. It's a little bit sweet because of that honey, but you can't really taste the parsnip or anything. This complements each other very, very well. This is one of the things that the server recommended. Sometimes you just gotta take the advice of the server and then you end up with a good meal. This probably gets like another four out of five. It's not quite a five for me. The salmon is a little bit dry. It's not like perfect, but it still tastes really good. You learn on Disney Cruise Line, all the guests fill out the survey at the end of your stay and it tells you to rate the how good the food was. And your servers will always be like, if you like the food, rate it a 10 or 5 or whatever, whatever the, 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 the highest rating is. And the reason why they say that is the servers actually get uh, judged based on what you think of the food. Which is kind of crazy because they didn't cook the food. Yeah. But they're the people recommending the food. So when you're on a Disney cruise in particular, when they recommend food to you, it's usually the best thing on the menu because they want you to give the high ratings to yeah. the groups. They want to steer you away from the thing that sounds like it's going to be good and yeah. doesn't end up being good. Well, he also recommended what you ordered. Yes, the thing he recommended for an entree here is a 1923 peppered filet mignon. It comes with buttered long green beans, smoked bacon, crushed fingerling potato hash, and pink pepper cafe ah light. <laughs> Cafe latte. A latte. <laughs> what? It's spelled... It's spelled... A-U-L-A-I-T. Cafe latte. How am I supposed to know? I'm not French. I hope you've never heard, heard that before. Peter doesn't drink coffee. Sorry. Oh, slow-mo. That's a slow-mo contender right there. Oh, slow-mo. That's a slow-mo contender right there. Oh my god, I should have got that. Yeah, I ordered medium. You don't even like filet. Oh, it looks so good. <laughs> that was very juicy. Whatever that sauce is, does it have like coffee in it? Yes. So that, yeah, it has like a little like coffee taste <laughs> yes. to it. It is. That's how it now makes sense. <laughs> Latte. Very good. Server was right. This is the one to get. Five out of five, Peter. Dang, you, everything gets like a five from you. Hey, I'm enjoying myself. Who are you, Kitra? <laughs> Hey, the food's actually good. I'm not just giving everything a five. It's the same. I want to mention the music that they play in here because it sets such a vibe. It's like classic Disney songs, but played in kind of like a smooth jazz retro. Like they're playing the Corolla Deville song, and it's like do 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 do. Good, good stuff. By the way, you made fun of the way I said. Cafe au lait. Yeah, you did not say it correctly. Well, I meant to. If I didn't say it that way, that's what I. I think you said cafe. A latte. L latte. I think it's cafe au lait, right? Right, everyone. <laughs> Peter doesn't drink coffee, so he doesn't get it. She thought it was it. so funny, and then she it said it was wrong. funny because you were like cafe le le eat. Like, what did you even say? I was like, what? No, that's not what it is. Thankfully, we didn't record this, and it won't be on the internet forever. It's fine. We we mispronounce everything, and I mean, you guys already know that. Like, it's kind of our thing. It's like quirky and cute, right? <laughs>
baby. For my dessert, I had to get the churros calientes. This is sugar spice churros with dulce de leche sauce off to the side. Whenever there's a new churro in Disney, oh yeah, gotta you know get it. we gotta try it. Yeah. <laughs> Oh. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Oh. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Is it worthy? Yeah. Crispy on the outside, a little bit soft on the inside. It's hard to describe the sugar on it. It's almost like a cinnamon, but a little bit more spicy than a cinnamon. I think what makes this is this Dolce de Leche sauce. So good. Oh if you like caramel. <laughs> My only complaint is it come to your table, not really warm or hot. Kind of like oh, they've been sitting there, yeah. not even under a heat lamp or anything. Oh, no. That said, I think I would still give this a five out of five. Oh, my. Yeah. Oh, Peter, you're going crazy tonight. Hey, that is good. What I ordered for dessert is the Atwater Fuji Apple Cheesecake, and this has a sweet dough shell caramelized apple cinnamon cheesecake and an oat crumble. Look at it. Would you look at it? Yeah. It's glittery, it's gold, it almost looks like a little apple. And Atwater is a village in Los Angeles. I think that's where Walt Disney first started his... No, it, or maybe there was like a... Anyways, this looks amazing. This is delicious. It's decadent. Has a very slight apple taste. You gotta really dig underneath it. That's where the little chunks of apples are. It's almost like an apple pie, which is like a nice creamy, glittery gold top on top. Three and a half out of five. Like I think it looks beautiful, but it doesn't quite like match the look with the taste. Yeah. But it's still good and I'm still gonna eat it. And as a backup, I got the, the, the brownie sundae. <laughs> Looks nice. This is my original choice and they talked me into this one, so I'm gonna eat both. The thing I think I like about 1923 is usually there's one restaurant on a cruise ship that doesn't have a theme, it's like lightly themed, there's no show, it's like tritons or whatever, and it's usually blah, and nobody <laughs> loves eating there. This is that restaurant, but it's actually well themed and it has good food. nice touch and such like I don't know it's so unexpected and just so magical it's what Walt used to do, like to do the kiss good night yeah it's the kiss good night it's our final night the kiss good night try not to be sad about it <laughs> so that was that's such a nice ending of our trip sad night fun's over oh we got a towel animal look at this beauty what do we got? It looks like a lobster. I love that our stateroom attendant is using the, the, the blanket. He hasn't been using towels. But he did give us three pieces of chocolate since yesterday we didn't get a towel animal, so maybe he felt bad. <laughs> you did tell him to make two towels. I did. He saw us today and he's like, is everything okay? Like, you had your do not disturb sign on like all day. And I was like, I, we just forgot to take it off. He's like, oh. I was like, so you should make us two towel animals tonight. And he was like, ha, ha, ha. And then I like felt bad. I like felt bad. I was like, just kidding, just kidding. So it's fine. Use the blanket. 
and give us extra chocolate. This might be the end of our media preview cruise, but there's so much stuff that we didn't get to. And guess what? We're going to be back, so please subscribe below. <laughs> if you missed out any of our adventures from the Disney Witch, we'll put them all right over there. I want to say thank you to some of our Patreons. That includes Kent, Del Baker, Cynthia Santos, and Kendall Homestead Gilman. Thank you guys so much. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see, see you, you on, on the, the next, next adventure. adventure.